Hello guys, welcome back to Being Mrs. Frazier and welcome to week four of my holiday home prep series. I have been enjoying the series. I hope you guys have been as well. We've been decluttering, but now we're gonna go ahead and get down to cleaning. We definitely need to get all the Halloween and fall decor put away so we can deep clean this house and get it prepped for Christmas decorations. That's right, you guys. You guys want to make sure you stay tuned because as we deep clean um, in the next few videos, we will be decorating for Christmas next week, Sunday. I think you guys will see that video on Sunday. So actually it's this week for me and I cannot be more excited. I am so, so, so ready for Christmas. I did put a poll out there um, and asking you guys when you would like to hear some Christmas music and the poll said in November. Well, this video is going to go up without Christmas music, so I do apologize, but the next ones will have Christmas music. I promise. I, I love Christmas time. I love Christmas music. I have been enjoying all the Christmas videos, um, all the Christmas decorations in stores. I have just been enjoying it all. It is Oh, I am so excited again for Christmas to be here. It's just such a magical time of year. I hope you guys will just stick around and join me um, throughout the rest of this series. Like I said, this is week four. And yeah, we, we got some deep cleaning to do. Um, we're going to, in today's video, we're going to be deep cleaning the living room and the um master bedroom so i will be sharing that with you and i will be sharing all my tips and tricks to keeping your homes clean and ready for those holiday guests She's got a hold on me So let's go ahead and jump right into this. You guys, keeping a clean home, how do we do this? Keeping a routine, making sure that you have a daily, a weekly, a monthly routine or goals will help you maintain a clean home home you know i i make sure that i have weekly things going on um you know daily act uh, activities not activities but daily things that i do that help keep my home clean and ready for guests i can literally i i as long as i have a good you know 15 minute warning my home could be prepared for anybody so let's go ahead and jump into what those daily routines could kind of look like um you know let's create a laundry routine so for instance um in our home my girls if you don't know um well first hi i'm tammy how are you doing? <laughs> um, my family of six moved down to Florida. Um, I know now I'm kind of like pulling out of the sky here with this content, but or this um, voice over here. But I totally forgot that I haven't introduced myself in a while, so I do apologize for that. So let me give you a little backstory of our family. We are a family of six, three girls and a boy. We have three teenage girls. Yes, teenage girls, all three at the same time. And life is is life. 
Um, anyway, we have a 17 year old, a 15 year old, a 13 year old and a 10 year old boy. So my husband and I moved our family down here to Florida just over two and a half years ago or so um, after living our entire lives in Nebraska. So we have done things. What have I done to help keep my home clean with such a busy, large family, semi-large, big family? I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> um, so some of those things that we do in our home to keep things moving, to keep things clean, um, is creating a laundry routine. So this is very important. Making sure you stay on top of the laundry. You don't have big piles built up and stuff like that because those types of things will make your home, you know, have a smell, which all homes have a smell. You can't smell them. You become nose blind to them. It is a thing. But making sure you stay up on your laundry will help with that. So like I said, um, or like I was getting into before I went on that little uh, side road there. Um, our girls, uh, we have three again, um, wash their clothes. They usually do a load on Wednesdays. So they'll throw a load in before they go to school. And if I remember, I will try to, um, switch that over to the dryer. So that way it's dry by the time they get home from school so they can fold it and put it all away. And then on, they, um, do the rest of their loads, which is about two, more loads of laundry for them um, on Saturdays. And then on Sundays, they wash all their bedding. So that way, you know, those are their days. They know that is their days. Um, and they kind of, it helps get everything done for them. Um, one of our girls, she is weightlifting. She does softball and she works. And so um, trying to keep up on all of her laundry alone is a hassle. It's, it is a lot. So because she is constantly changing clothes and stuff like that. Um, so they have basically three days a week um, to wash their, their clothing and their bedding. And yes, they do wash their own. They take care of it all. Um, I feel like it's very important. We, we, my husband and I feel like it's very important to teach our kids how to take care of their own things. Um, you know, when... For example, when my grandma, my mom's side passed away, you know, my grandpa had no idea how to run a washer. And, you know, I know that's very typical of that generation, the women taking care of everything. Um, but regardless, you know, I, I want my kids to know how to learn or how to take care of their own homes because at some point, you know, especially our oldest, I mean, she's 17. She She's getting close enough to the age where she might move out here in a few years. And so I just want to make sure that they are prepped and ready for that. Um, so anyway, it's another side road. If you're new, hello. <laughs> I do go off on little tangents a little bit. We take side roads to get back to the main road. It's okay. Um, but anyway, um, and then so during the week, I also wash um, my husband's clothes and my clothes on Mondays so that way we have a fresh week we're back to the weekday and then I wash everything um, and then we wash towels and rugs like bathroom rugs and that on Tuesdays and then our son will wash his clothes and his bedding all on Fridays so we are literally running the washer going almost every single day during the week um, you know it is it is what it is. Um, it's, it's a lot. Again, we are a big family. I counted it one time and I forget. I don't know. I feel like it was somewhere upwards like 30 loads a week between all six of us. I know that sounds like absolutely insane, but it's very realistic for us. Um, yeah. And then when you have days like, uh, like when I'm cleaning the living room, um, stuff like that, you know, adding in all the linens for that, the blankets, the throw blankets, the pillow cases and all that. It's, it. I know, I know it's a lot. <laughs>
So I know creating a routine can be kind of difficult. So if you are one of those that struggle with keeping a routine, start your days by just making your bed. Make your bed and I feel like, you know, it seems that whenever the bed just gets made, it, it helps me to want to keep going. Um, I'll be honest, because I'm all about honesty around here, um, I don't always make my bed. And you know, I notice on days that I don't, um, I just, the day just seems sluggish. I seem less productive with my days. Um, I, I don't know what it is. It, there's just something about getting that bed made that helps me, um, it just, helps me to want to keep going. So, um, like I said, when you make that bed, it just helps you stay productive. Um, I don't know what it is. It, it's like, it's like a snowball effect, you know, and if you just start somewhere, um, and, and making the bed is like the simplest way to start. It just like has a snow bed, a, sm a snowball effect and it just keeps going. And then you just keep cleaning and wanting to do things to kind of just, you know, help maintain your home. So it also with a made bed, you're less likely to crawl back into that bed because I know some of us, um, especially when you start getting into perimenopause and all those fun and lovely things, you need a nap. And I know if I take a nap, my day is shot. There is nothing more. I will not be doing anything else the rest of the day. It, it's, I don't know what it is. Um, I mean, outside of like taking care of my kids and cooking dinner and stuff like that and being a taxi mom, um, those kind of things stay productive. But when it comes to like the cleaning, the cleaning will be done. It, it just is. Um, so let's, let's help start that routine of just getting your bed made and you know what making that bed keep it simple you don't need all those throw pillows and all those blankets you know I know they're pretty but they're expensive they take up space and sometimes you feel a little overwhelming when there's just so much to make that bed and you're, and you're looking at your pile of stuff and it's like man I really just don't feel like putting that on the bed. But if you just have a few things, it, it makes it so much easier. You're just pulling a blanket up, pulling the sheet up, you know, and throwing some pillows on the bed. It, it makes it so much easier when you have less. We kind of, it kind of goes back into the decluttering. When you have less, you feel better. It's easier to take care of, easier to maintain. So, I mean, that goes for kiddos too, you know, definitely have your kids making their beds. Um, it makes the house feel nicer. It looks nicer. And like I said, their beds can look just as nice too with a simple blanket or comforter and a pillow. And then, you know, it just makes things look neat and tidy. So now we need to talk. <laughs> I know this is a bit controversial, but I have been hearing that people are not using flat sheets anymore is this a thing i i don't know like i heard this over on tiktok and so i'm curious i need to know are y'all using your flat sheets <laughs> because i am we so when i make a bed i you know you have your your mattress cover and then a fitted sheet a flat sheet a blanket and a comforter so we do not always use the comforter. It literally stays at the end of my bed. You'll see that here soon enough in the video. Um, but I'm hearing that that it's a controversial topic to use a flat sheet. Y'all need to, y'all gotta let me know about this. Is it true? Is it not true? Um, I don't know. I, I'm just curious uh, what's going on in the world for this to be happening that people are using flat sheets. I get, I honestly get that it makes it easier to make a bed because you're literally just pulling a blanket up and calling it a day. But I'm just curious. I don't know, it's because sometimes, like I feel like I need a sheet to sleep because sometimes the blanket is just too heavy and I just want to cover up with the sheet. But sometimes I need that little bit extra warmth and I grab the blanket and cover it up on me as well. So y'all are gonna have to let me know <laughs> what is going on with these flat sheets, y'all. You 
You poured it out into the ocean Cause you can't keep it when I fall Yeah, when I fall Another step to keeping um, a daily routine or helping to maintain a clean home um, is making sure you're sweeping or vacuuming daily. So we obviously have pets. You see the cats all over in this video because we, let's be real, they are very nosy. Uh, it's a cat thing to be nosy, I guess. Um, but with pets, they leave fur everywhere. Um, like I said, we also have girls with long hair, myself with long hair, we shed, that hair gets left everywhere. I'm sure you saw the little piles of hair built up in the hallway uh, when I was vacuuming earlier out there in the living room. I, those are hair piles for my girls. <laughs> I don't know if they just take it out of their brush and throw it on the floor or what the deal is, but that's literally what that was. Um, so making sure you're sweeping and vacuuming every day to get the hair built up or picked up, especially when you have pets or girls or boys with long hair, it is definitely, it, it, it helps to keep vacuuming. <laughs> Um, also, like I said, we live in Florida and no matter how hard I try, to like prevent it sand always 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 gets in our house our we we live so close to the beach you guys we're like 10 15 minutes from the beach um from the atlantic ocean and our yard is quite literally sand you, you walk out in it it is sand there's it you have to dig pretty far down before you even hit any sort of dirt um so yeah it gets in the house whether i want it to or not it just does we do not wear shoes in the house um that is a very big rule of mine i grew up that way you don't wear your shoes in the house and so um i think it also helps prevent um you know things or it helps keep things cleaner longer in my opinion um, so yeah, so another, like I said, we make sure, um, or I make sure that it gets vacuumed, that our home gets vacuumed daily. Um, it, it just, it just has to be, <laughs> um, now I will be honest as far as mopping goes, um, mopping does not happen every day. It happens every few days, uh, just to make sure that we are getting any of those excess cleans and spills up, any of that extra dirt, stuff like that. But for daily use, um, if you feel like you need to mop, you can totally get one of those wet vacs. We have um, a Bissell wet vac. I really want to get the Shark um, wet vac that is cordless. I would love to have one of those. Um, but you know, whatever is in your budget, even if you have like the little wet, the Swiffer wet jet or whatever that's called, um, just to do a quick cleanup or whatever you want or whatever you feel is necessary. So. Um, you know, because I know that those of you with dogs, it rains outside, they come in with muddy paws, you know, you could always just spray that down and wipe it up with a towel or, you know, get your wet back out and clean it up or with spills, stuff like that. Um, you know, but making sure that you are keeping up on that as a daily situation. If you spill, clean it up immediately. It's so much easier to clean up. Um, as opposed to letting it just sit there and ride out and dry onto your floor. Um, you know, that's one thing that I've been very hard, that's been um, hard to teach my kids. When you spill, clean it up immediately. It's much easier than just letting it go. So I know accidents happen. It is what it is. We all spill. I know I spill a ton. I am a messy cook. Like I try to clean as I go, but I am very messy. And so I do try to just clean up you know, do spot cleaning and stuff like that when it comes to those types of messes. Be better off without you I just don't see the meaning in going back and forth like we do Oh yeah, cause you got a way of making me feel like there's nothing that we can't do 
But then you turn your back on it, leaving me regretting this now, now, now. Baby, you're nothing but a bad dream. Nicotine, turn me up, play with me. When you got nothing to do, you take me higher. Another little tip that I have is when you are cleaning, you want to work from top to bottom. So like you saw, I started in the bedroom with the ceiling fans, which, oh my gosh, I just realized I totally forgot to clean the ceiling fan in the living room. What am I thinking you guys? <laughs> ah, do you guys ever do that? You ever like go through and clean and then come back and you're like, oh, dang it, I forgot to clean that. Yep, definitely one of those moments I am, you are witnessing live here, but Anyway, so tip from Tammy, start from the top, work your way down. Um, like I said, start with the ceiling fans, the the ceilings, because your ceilings do get dusty, um, you know, whether it blows off of your fan or from your vents. So we, we definitely need to probably replace some of our vents in our home. I have cleaned them and cleaned them and they just like don't look clean anymore. Um, but, you know, replacing stuff like that also helps things look clean. Um, you know, we get a lot of rust and stuff built up down here. Uh, our hinges, I'm like all our doors in that were full of rust. And so we did go through and replace all of them. Um, but just doing small things like that, uh, just kind of help keep your house looking cleaner. Um, but anyway, as I was saying, starting from top to bottom, you know, um, working with ceiling fans, walls, windows, and then work your way down um to you know your furniture um and then down to the floors when it comes to doing that you know vacuuming and then mopping and um i actually like to mop though so here in a second you'll see that i'm going to um shampoo our rug i actually like to mop after i shampoo because sometimes that dirty water gets onto the actual floor onto the tile in that and so i like to go back through and mop all that up after i do the shampooing of the rug And then going back to what I was saying earlier about homes having smells, they just do. Um, again, you're probably nose blind to what your house actually smells like, but find somebody that is honest with you. I know my stepmom always like, you know, I would ask her and she's like, no, your house smells amazing. So I'm like, okay, cause I need somebody to be honest with me. My mom, same thing, you know, when she was alive, like I would ask and she's like, no, you're good. Like it, it doesn't smell to me you know, and stuff like that. So I, I always ask people that I know will be honest with me. And then, um, especially because, you know, we do have pets, we do have kids. I cook in our home all the time. Um, so if you're using like strong smelling seasonings and spices, or you have pets or kids, again, your home probably does have some sort of smell. Um, but so to help combat that, you know, or ways to help prevent that, make sure you're scooping your litter box at least once a day and then just, you know, keeping the litter um, fresh and clean. I think litter literally, um, I forget, it says on the box how long it actually lasts, like the scent or the, like the stuff that helps keep the litter from smelling. Um, you know, and then making sure that you're just scrubbing that box out at least once a month completely, washing it down and scrubbing it out. You know, with dogs, making sure you're washing their bedding regularly, keeping your home vacuumed um, daily to pick up that pet fur, uh, whether it is a dog or a cat or whatever other animal you may have. 
um, like with cooking smells and stuff like that. That one's a little bit tougher, but making sure that you're taking out the garbage every night, um, or especially if you've cooked like uh, um, with meat or something like that. I know there's been times where I'll like throw a chicken package out and I will go, um, like it'll be the next day and I'm like, what in the world it smells so bad? And it's literally because we forgot to take the, the garbage out the night before. So making sure if you're using stronger smelling items or meats or something like that, you're taking it out at night um, to help prevent your home from, you know, getting a little stinky, um, you know, making sure you're wiping down your counters and just keeping your surfaces clean in your kitchen and stuff like that. We'll be getting more in depth into the kitchen here. Um, the next video is a kitchen deep clean. And so we'll be getting more into depth about the kitchen here soon enough. So make sure you are subscribed and you come back for that video. I cannot wait to sh continue sharing um, these deep cleaning tips and tricks with you. But anyway, um, some other things that you can do that I love to do. I love to light a candle. I have a candle burning almost every single day um, at my house. I, I love candles so much. I know you guys see my unboxing videos for my monthly candle subscription. It is such a thing. But if you don't like candles, because I know some people are not a fan, um, you could totally use like a wax warmer. You can make your own potpourri on a stove or in a small crock pot. Um, especially with the holidays coming, there are so many good potpourri options that you could do um, with cranberries and cinnamon and stuff like that. Oh, those smells just... Mm, I can smell them without even having anything burning. <laughs> it just smells so good. Um... But I do want you guys to be aware, if you do have pets in your home, make sure that they are, your scents that you're using are not toxic for your pets because I know there are a lot of scents that can be. Um, and then also making sure if you are lighting those candles that you are watching them because, you know, cats, cats are a thing. They, they do like playing with those flames. We've definitely had our own experiences when I was a lot younger, a lot uh, a lot more immature in the candle situation, um, but yes. So, anyway, guys, um, I hope this video was helpful or motivational or inspirational for you all. I hope you guys will stick around for the rest of my series. This was week four. We have an entire 12 weeks um, for this series, which means we have eight weeks left. So again, we are doing some deep cleaning coming up soon, and then we will be decorating for Christmas, and I cannot wait. We are decorating the entire house this year, inside, outside, bathrooms, kitchen, living room. We're doing it all, so I hope you guys will come back for all of that. I hope you guys all stay happy, healthy, and safe, and we will see you in the next one. Bye, guys. Oh, 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 oh,